Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so question one. The antiderivative of x cubed means we add 1 to the exponent and then we divide by our new exponent. Don't forget the plus c. Uh, question two. Square root x is the same thing as x to the half power. So again, taking the antiderivative, I add 1 to the exponent to make it 3 halves. And then I divide by the new exponent, which is going to be like multiplying by 2 thirds. I noticed that you did, I didn't <laughs> read the question. I, I did the okay. Yeah. I'm late too. <laughs> <laughs> thought we were going to have just a study session for class today. Since uh, this is a record low attendance. <laughs> yeah. If you tried the power rule on question three, you would say, okay, let me add one to my exponent and then divide by my new exponent. But you can't divide by zero, so this is undefined. So instead, we remember that x to the negative one power is the same thing as one over x. And this antiderivative is natural log of absolute value x plus c. Now question four says find the antiderivative and this is going to just be our exponent rule. The five stays the same and then I'm going to divide by two and then write e to the two x plus c. And then the last thing, I can just treat each of these terms individually because antiderivatives have that additivity property. So the antiderivative of 4x cubed is going to be just x to the fourth. The antiderivative of 3x squared is just x cubed. The antiderivative of 2x is just going to be x squared. And the antiderivative of 1 is just x. And you can check all your answers. Remember by just taking the derivative of your answer and see if you get back your integrand. So like if I take the derivative of this answer with respect to x, that would be 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. And sure enough, that's the same as my integrand. So that checks out. If I wanted to check my answer to question 4, well, my derivative chain rule says I need to bring down that 2 in the e to the 2x, and I should get 5 e to the 2x after taking the derivative. And sure enough, that's the same thing as I got from my integrand, so that checks out. I took the proper antiderivative. Then my derivative rule is telling me that the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. And sure enough, that's the same thing as I had from my integrand, so that works. For question 2, if I take the derivative of my antiderivative, then we bring down the 3 halves, that cancels out the 2 thirds, I subtract 1 from my exponent, so this is x to the 1 half. And sure enough, that's what I have in my integrand, so that checks out. And first one, taking the derivative is going to give me just x cubed, which is my integrand. So you can always check your work after you've taken an antiderivative by taking the derivative. Get back what you said.
So there's no excuse for missing questions on our next season. You can always check your work. It's taking the derivative. At this point in the class, we've already had three midterm exams on derivatives. So hopefully you know how to take derivatives. Okay, so we're going to move on. And today we're talking about uh, the integration by substitution method. So our big idea for section 13.2 is that there really is not any sort of antiderivative product rule. So if you see the antiderivative of a product of functions, there's really nothing to help you. There's no antiderivative quotient rule, and there's no antiderivative chain rule. So antiderivatives in general are going to be more difficult and a little bit more complicated to deal with than derivatives were. But there's two methods we're going to learn in this class to handle slightly more complicated antiderivatives. The two methods we're going to learn are called integration by substitution and integration by parts. And today we're doing integration by substitution. So the procedure for integration by substitution is that you're going to choose a good expression that you see as part of your integral to be what we call lowercase u then you're going to take the derivative of that expression with respect to your independent variable. You're going to rearrange that equation to solve for just the dx. Then step number four, you're going to make the substitution. So you're going to look at your original integral, and then you're going to use that lowercase u to substitute in for that expression. You're going to use that formula for dx that you just found to substitute in for the dx in the original integral. Then you're going to take the antiderivative, which should be easier if you chose the correct lowercase u. And then we're going to make the reverse substitution so that we can put our final answer in terms of x instead of u. So uh, we're going to start off with this example. This antiderivative here, we don't know how to do it, but let me make a certain choice for u. I'm going to set lowercase u equals 1 minus 5x. And the reason I'm doing this, the reason I make that choice, is because I see I know about the antiderivative of square root x, or square root u. That's just u to the 1 half power, and then I just use my antiderivative power rule. So I know how to do that. And if I substitute 1 minus 5x just for lowercase u, then I would be able to, I, I can do that antiderivative. So that's my step one. My step two is to take the derivative of u with respect to x. So what is the derivative of u with respect to x now? Negative five. Perfect, negative 5. Now I want to rearrange this to solve for dx. So I'm going to multiply both sides times dx. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. When I multiply both sides by dx and divide both sides by negative 5, I get that this is negative 1 fifth times du. So that brings us through, I think, steps one, two, and three. Step one was choosing u equals one minus five x. Step two was finding that du dx was negative five. And step three was finding out that dx is equal to negative one fifth du. So now here's step four. In step four, we're going to uh, take my original integral. And now I'm going to replace 1 minus 5x with just u. So I'm going to replace this with a square root u. And then I'm going to replace dx with negative 1 fifth du. So 
Step five says I want to take this antiderivative now. So that negative one-fifth constant factor inside there, I can actually take that outside of my antiderivative. And this is the antiderivative of square root u, or you could write u to the one-half power with respect to u. Now this was part of the quiz questions. What is the antiderivative of u to the one-half power? So I add one to the exponent, so one half becomes three halves, and then I divide by my new exponent, and dividing by three halves is the same thing as multiplying times two thirds, so that would be my antiderivative. I add just any old arbitrary constant, and I can't forget my negative one fifth out front. So I'm going to do uh, negative one fifth times two over three, is going to be negative 2 fifteenths. u to the 3 halves power, this is the point where I do step number 6. I make the reverse substitution. So I'm going to make that u into a 1 minus 5x to the power of 3 halves. And then, of course, don't forget your plus c. That is going to be my final answer. Again, like always, you can always take the derivative of your answer here and make sure that after taking the derivative, you get back the square root of 1 minus 5x. In fact, let's do that really quick. So here we're checking our answer. So taking the derivative. The negative 2 fifteenths stays the same in the derivative. Then I have a power rule going on where I'm going to bring down that 3 halves out front. So that's the 3 halves. And then the power rule says I subtract 1 from my exponent, so that becomes a 1 half power. And then on the inside I have 1 minus 5x. Also, the derivative chain rule says I need to multiply this whole thing times the in, sorry, times the derivative of my inside function. So the derivative of 1 minus 5x is negative 5, so I multiply times negative 5. And then the derivative of that plus c constant is just 0. So out front, I'm going to multiply negative 2 times 3. Well, let me, let me first cancel that 2 with that 2 in the denominator. And then I have 3 times 5 is 15, and so that 15 in the denominator cancels with that 3 and that 5. Those two negatives make a positive, and what I'm left with is just square root 1 minus 5x. So that's actually what I started with in my original integrand. So that's, again, our way to check our answer that we did this properly. OK. New one. It's asking for the antiderivative of 3x times e to the power x squared. Again, looks pretty tough. Looks like we don't know how to do that antiderivative immediately. Because we don't have a product rule. We don't have a chain rule. The only thing I can use is this u substitution. So I'm going to make a choice for u. And I'll let you guys tell me. Do you have... Do you have any like sort of hunch about what my lowercase u should be this time? Period. Do you, don't, do you want it to be the whole thing you're taking the derivative of, or just part of it? So you, you want it to just be part of it. Okay. Because, yeah, if you made it the whole thing, that wouldn't really be helpful. So, 3x? Or ex? These are all good guesses, and you're going to get better at guessing the more you practice with this. But the correct choice of u is going to be x squared. 
we're gonna find a lot of times the correct choice of u is whatever is like kind of like the inside function like if you were gonna do like a if you were looking at a function composition where it's one function composed with another one a lot of times the correct choice for u is gonna be that inside function it's gonna be like the duck stuffed inside the turkey so anyways, I see that x squared is stuffed inside the exponential function, and so I'm going to make x squared my choice for u. So say there was another exponent on top of that x squared, would you probably use that one then? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, I want to point out, um, this can be a trial and error process. It's very possible that you're going to make the wrong choice for you at some point. Like during an exam, you're looking at an integration by substitution problem. Maybe you choose the wrong U. You try to work it out and it's not really working for you. You can't get a good answer. You might have to erase what you've done and choose a different choice for you. Sometimes it's not obvious what you should be choosing. But like I said, we're going to choose x squared here. And then what would my du dx be? 2x. 2x, perfect. And then I need to rearrange this to solve for dx. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by dx and divide both sides by 2x. And I should get 1 over 2x times du. So that's steps 1, 2, and 3. Now I should go back to my original integral and I will substitute x squared for u so that's going to look like 3x times e to the power u and I'll also substitute dx with 1 over 2x du. So we're making progress. I can simplify this a little bit. So what's going on inside that integral is 3x times e to the u times 1 over 2x du. How can I simplify that? I see an, I see an x in the numerator and I see an x in the denominator, so those can cancel. That's a big simplification. And then I also see a 3 halves constant here, right? So I'm multiplying by 3, I'm dividing by 2. That means I can pull out 3 halves onto the outside of this integral. So I can make it 3 halves times e to the u du. Oh, okay. I thought it was e, but it would And by the way, this is really important. Notice that I'm left with an antiderivative that only has u's in it. I don't have any x's. If you end up with an antiderivative that has some x's hanging out, then you cannot take the antiderivative. It has to be just in terms of u. Um, so again, taking the antiderivative of e to the power u du, well, that antiderivative of e to the u is just going to be e to the u plus c. That's one of the things we have to memorize. So this is going to be 3 halves e to the u plus c. And now I'm going to make that reverse substitution and make u an x squared. So this is going to be 3 halves e to the power x squared plus c. And you could check your answer by taking the derivative. So let's try this again, but we're, this time we're going to make the wrong choice for lowercase u and we're going to see what happens. Because like I said, I guarantee you 100% chance that every single person in this class is going to make the wrong choice for you at some point like during an exam. And so I want you to be able to recognize when you've made the wrong choice so that you can backpedal and try something else. So we have antiderivative of 3x e to the x squared dx. What if you chose u equals, I don't know, 3x? 
then du dx would be a 3. Solving for dx would be 1 third du. And when I plug all this stuff back in here, this would be antiderivative of, well, 3x is just u. And I would still have e to the x squared. And then my dx is going to be 1 third u. Sorry, 1 third du. So this is going to be equal to 1 third antiderivative u e to the x squared du. What I just said a couple minutes ago is that you cannot take the antiderivative if you have any x's remaining. Here, I still have an e to the x squared in there, so I can't take this antiderivative because of this guy. That's sort of a no-go. So this is the point where you would hit a dead end and you would say, crap, I must have made the wrong choice for you. And so we erase all of it and we restart. And this time we know that u equals 3x is not the right choice. So then you say, instead of u equals 3x, let me make u equal to e to the power x squared. And in that case, du dx would be this derivative and I'm going to have to use the derivative chain rule. So the derivative of the exponential function, my outside function is e to the x squared, times the derivative of the inside function x squared would be 2x. If I rearrange to solve that for dx, I multiply both sides of that equation times dx, and that gives me, oh, and then I divide by e to the x squared times 2x. And that's going to give me that dx is equal to e to the negative x squared times 1 over 2x du. And I'm going to make the substitution into my original antiderivative. So I have antiderivative of 3x times u times dx, which is e to the negative x squared times 1 over 2x du. And this x in the numerator cancels with the x in the denominator, and I can pull out a 3 halves and get 3 halves antiderivative of u e to the negative x squared du. But again, I'm still not able to take this antiderivative because I still have x's hanging out. So now at this point you would say, well, I'm going to erase all of this work that I've done because I chose the wrong u. And now I know that u can't be 3x, and I know that u cannot be e to the x squared. And so then maybe your next try might be like u equals x squared, and then you find out that it works, right? So this is a trial and error process sometimes. Not always obvious what lowercase u should be, but I think if you practice more, you get used to being able to identify that. Okay, here we have antiderivative of 2t divided by t plus 3 all to the fifth power. I don't know how to immediately take the antiderivative, so I'm going to try a u substitution. What should my lowercase u be this time? Okay, let's try it. t plus 3 to the fifth, which means that du dt is going to be, well, chain rule says that's 5 times t plus 3 to the fourth power, or that's power rule. And then the chain rule would say multiply times the derivative of the inside function, but the derivative of t plus 3 is just 1. So multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. Okay. Now I need to rearrange to solve for this dt. So multiply both sides by dt and divide both sides by all of this junk. And we get dt is equal to 1 fifth times t plus 3 to the power of negative 4 du. And now I'm going to make this substitution. 
So this is going to be antiderivative of 2t divided by u, because u is t plus 3 to the fifth power. That was my choice for you. Times dt, and dt is 1 fifth times t plus 3 to the power negative 4 du. So the problem is that I have, I still have some t's left in here. And if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna really take the antiderivative, I need only u's left inside the integral. So I, you know, like I said, it's tricky to pick the right u, but I don't think that that was the right choice of u because things should have simplified a little bit better. So let's try it. Let's start over and try again. 2t. 2t? OK. 2t, which means du dt would be 2, which means that dt is going to be equal to 1 half du. So let's make those substitutions. This is now antiderivative of u in the numerator, because u is 2t, divided by t plus 3 to the fifth power times dt, which is 1 half du. And again, I think this was the wrong choice of u because I'm still left with some t's hanging around. So let's try over, <laughs> start over, try again. Uh, this is a tricky one. Teams what else should we try? What else do you see inside here that we might try? Oh, t plus 3. OK, t plus 3. Let's try that one out. So the derivative would just be 1. So that means dt is equal to du. So making these substitutions, I should get uh, 2t divided by u to the fifth power times du. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, ah, oh, crap, we still have a t there. But don't give up yet because Let's take a look at this and say, if I rearrange this to solve for t, I would get t is equal to u minus 3. So here, where I see that t, I can replace it with a u minus 3. I can make this antiderivative of 2 times u minus 3, now divided by u to the fifth du. And so at least I have an antiderivative now that's only in terms of u. Okay, so it's still not in a form where I'm really confident that I can take the antiderivative. So let me let me mess around with it a little bit more, just doing algebra to the inside. Like I'll distribute that two. Well, heck, I'm not going to distribute the two. I'm just going to take the two outside of the integral, so I don't have to worry about it. And then whenever I have u minus 3 divided by u to the fifth, let me keep the denominator the same and just split that up into two different fractions. Oops, not 5. <laughs> My first fraction is going to be u divided by u to the fifth. And then my next one is going to be minus 3 over u to the fifth du. Does that make sense how u minus 3 divided by u to the fifth could become u divided by u to the fifth minus 3 divided by u to the fifth? Sometimes these little uh, tidbits from algebra can trip us up. So in order to think about it, let's pretend that u is equal to like 2 and 
that three is like a one. So we're talking about like two minus one divided by two to the fifth power, which is 32. This is equal to two over 32 minus one over 32, which is one over 32, because two minus one was one and one over 32 is the same thing, right? So just trying to illustrate that this is totally okay, what we did right here. Splitting up the fraction by keeping the same denominator and splitting up the numerator at the plus or the minus signs. Okay. So getting back to it, u divided by u to the fifth, well, one of those u's in the numerator can cancel with one of those u's in the denominator, and so this is going to be 2 times antiderivative 1 over u to the fourth. And then also, remember the additivity rule of integrals? I can actually just close up that integral and then subtract 2 times the antiderivative of 3 over u to the fifth du. And then I can bring that 3 out of this one. So 3 times 2 is just 6, and I can make that 1 over u to the fifth du. So now I, I split up my two antiderivative, sorry. I split up my antiderivative, which is the difference of those two fractions up here on the left. I split it up into the difference of two antiderivatives. That's called the antiderivative additivity rule. Now we know that 1 over u to the fourth is the same thing as u to the power negative 4. And 1 over u to the fifth is the same thing as u to the power negative 5. Because when you have an exponent in the denominator, you can make that exponent a negative and bring it up to the numerator like we have. So now we're totally ready to do power rule to this thing. The antiderivative power rule tells me I need to raise the exponent by 1, so add 1 to the exponent, and then divide by my new exponent. So raising my exponent 1 is going to go from negative 4 to negative 3, and then we divide by my new exponent by dividing by a negative 3. Then have minus 6 u and then negative 5 plus 1 would be negative 4 and then I divide by my new exponent so I divide by negative 4 so this leaves me with negative 2 thirds u to the negative 3 plus 3 halves u to the negative 4 where if we go back to our very first step, our very first choice, we decided u was going to be equal to t plus 3 and so instead of u I'm going to write t plus 3 in these blanks. Okay, that was a long question. That's a real long question. Does anyone have a question about this example? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, 100%. So what you're saying is two questions. Huh? So you're saying there're going to be two questions. <laughs> two questions like on the how test. Long it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, if you want this to be worth 50% of your test grade. <laughs> be happy to accommodate. Yeah, so I mean, I feel like none of these steps were really difficult 
by themselves, but just making a whole lot of steps without making any mistakes is, is the tricky part. You know, when these, you get really long math problems, you have to be twice as careful because a little mistake can really, really you know, mess you up down the road here. So. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And you know, like the point of, of learning about matrices is because that's how computers do math. That's how computers solve systems of equations. So forcing students to work matrices by hand is, is kind of like torture. Like you weren't, you weren't built to do that like a computer was built to do that, you know. So it's kind of, it's kind of cruel to make students solve those matrix problems by hand, but that is what it is, I guess. Uh, here we go. New example, I have natural log t all to the fourth power divided by t, um, taking the antiderivative of all this with respect to t. So what do you think I should choose in this problem to be my u substitution? The natural log of t. OK, I think that's a good choice. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't worked any of these problems yet, but I think that's a good choice. We'll see. du dt is going to be equal to what? Yep. Perfect. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over whatever you have inside the natural log. So in this case, 1 over t. I need to rearrange this little equation du dt so that I solve for dt. And so this is going to give me dt is equal to t du because I have to multiply both sides of the equation by dt and multiply both sides of the equation by t so dt is equal to t du okay so going back to my original antiderivative we now have the antiderivative of in the numerator I can write u to the fourth then I divide by t and then I multiply times dt, but dt is now t du. And I can see that I have a t in the denominator and a t in the numerator. So t divided by t is just 1. Those cancel out. And so this gives me the antiderivative of u to the fourth power with respect to u. What is the antiderivative of u to the fourth power du? One third u. Close. One fifth. One fifth. Oh, yeah. I guess it's one fifth. One fifth. Yeah. So we add one to our exponent, we get u to the fifth. And then we divide everything by our new exponent. So I'll write one fifth out front. So one fifth u to the fifth. Don't forget your plus c. And by the way, clearly I forgot my plus c on that last problem. So this, my final answer should be plus c over here. We didn't even notice that either. Right? I know. It's tricky, it. tricky to remember. I got yeah. We remember the plus c on our first two examples. And remembered it late on the third one. Okay, so uh, one fifth u to the fifth plus c. Now I just have to undo my substitution and remember that u is equal to natural log of t. And so I get one fifth natural log of t all to the fifth power plus c. And that was way shorter and easier than previous example. I'm going a few steps there. We even guessed the correct U on the first try. That's the hardest part. What? One divided by the square root of T times E to the square root of oh. T. Yeah. All right, let's go with purple. My next example says e to the power t to the power negative 1 divided by t 
t squared. What should I choose for u? t to the negative 1. Okay, I like that choice. I like u is equal to t to the negative 1 power. So then du dt, what will that derivative be? Yep, negative 1 times t to the power of negative 2. Yeah. Rearranging now to solve for dt, I have to multiply both sides of my equation by dt and divide both sides of my equation by negative t to the negative 2 power, but really that's kind of like negative 1 over t squared. It's not kind of like that, but t to the negative 2 power is 1 over t squared. So I could also think about it as multiplying both sides of my equation by negative t squared. So I think this should be dt is equal to negative t squared du. So then I bring it all the way back to my original antiderivative, and where I see e to the t to the negative 1 power, I can write that as e to the u. I divide by t squared, and then dt is now times negative t squared du. So I have t squared in the numerator, t squared in the denominator, those cancel out. And that's nice because it leaves me with an antiderivative that's just in terms of u. I have antiderivative of eu du. And I, I took the little minus sign and put it out front because a negative 1 is just a constant multiplier and my antiderivative homogeneity rule tells me that I can pull out the negative 1 out front. I don't have to worry about it. So what's my antiderivative of e to the u with respect to u? Yep. It's just e to the u plus e. And now I reverse my substitution. And so this is going to be negative e to the power t to the power negative 1 plus c. Final answer. Again, you could, if you want to, you can take the derivative of this just to check your answer. And if you use your derivative chain rule properly, it'll be negative e to the power t to the negative 1 times the derivative of t to the negative 1, which would be negative 1 t to the negative 2 power, which will be positive e to the t to the negative 1 divided by t squared, which is our original integrand. Okay, now our new example is the one that Cyrus likes. <laughs> what should I choose for my u? The square root of t. Yep, good choice. Square root t. So that means that du dt is... Perfect. One half t to the power negative one half. Again, because square root of t is just t to the one half power, and then you use our derivative power rule to subtract one from the exponent and multiply by our old exponent one half. And then I can write dt is equal to, well, this is really one over two root t. When I write t to the negative half power, that's 1 over square root t. And so what I need to do is multiply both sides of this little equation here by 2 root t. And so dt is going to be equal to 2 times root t times du. OK. Taking it back to my original antiderivative. 
and I have 1 divided by And, and well, <laughs> let me backpedal one little step because I don't want to make this more confusing than it has to be. Whenever I see this dt formula, sometimes my formula for dt actually includes what I just defined for my u. Like here, I said that u was going to be equal to square root t. And in my dt formula, I have a square root t. So I can make that square root t into a u. I can write dt as equal to 2u du. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's just going to make this a little bit less confusing whenever I go to write this. So I have 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, I have square root t, which is a u, times e to the power of square root t, which is another u. And then I have times dt, which is 2u du. So I see a u in my numerator, boom, a u in my denominator, boom, those cancel. And I'm simplifying. I can bring the 2 outside of the antiderivative. So I write 2 antiderivative. I would write 1 over e to the u. But an e to the u in the denominator is like having an e to the negative u in the numerator. And so that's why I write this. Because it's at the bottom. Yeah. Now, somebody tell me, what would be the antiderivative of e to the power negative u? Very close. Very, very, very close. You might have to reference your notes from yesterday, where like rule number two had to do with the derivative of exponents. Right, now I just want you to take what is the antiderivative of e to the negative u with respect to u? And I'll write out what rule I'm referring to. So we had five rules we needed to memorize about antiderivatives. And one of them said that the antiderivative of e to the power alpha x or something like this was equal to 1 over alpha e to the alpha x plus c. In our case, my x is actually a u, right, instead of an x. And my alpha would be like a negative 1. This is like e to the power of negative 1 times u over here. So 1 divided by negative 1 would just be a negative 1. So my real answer is going to be negative 1 e to the power negative u. Yeah, so negative e to the negative u plus c. Yep. 
Okay, so now making that reverse substitution where u is just square root t, this is going to be negative 2 e to the power negative square root t plus c. Okay. Of course, stop me if you have any questions at any point. But last one on this page says, well, it's a mouthful. The antiderivative of, in parentheses, 2t minus 3t squared, close parentheses, times, in parentheses, 2, sorry, t squared minus t cubed, close parentheses, to the seventh power, dt. The question is, what is going to be my u? By the way, if you were extremely patient and you had like four hours to kill, you could actually expand out t squared minus t cubed to the seventh power, and then you could multiply that by 2t minus 3t squared, and then you would just have a huge polynomial of the 16th degree with 17 individual terms. And then you could take the antiderivative of each of the 17 terms individually, and then you could write out your answer. And you wouldn't ever have to do a u substitution, but it would take you like four hours, and you probably will make a mistake at some point during that. So that's, it's possible to do this by other means, but it's just not easy. The u substitution is going to make this one easy. But what do I choose for lowercase u? One more time, Dan. T squared minus T cubed. T squared minus T cubed. Yeah, I like this. Here inside that seventh power, I have something. If I could just simplify that to a u to the seventh power, that's going to make my integrand a lot simpler. So we're going to set u is equal to T squared minus T cubed. So the derivative of u with respect to T is going to be two T minus three T squared. And already I'm getting good vibes about this because I recognize my du dt appears inside my integrand. So I just, I'm just feeling confident that this is going to work out. I solve for dt and I write 1 over 2t minus 3t squared du oh, that makes sense. is equal to dt. And now I can write this antiderivative as 2t minus 3t squared times u to the seventh times my dt is 1 over 2t minus 3t squared du. And these factor in the numerator and denominator are the same, so they cancel. So this simplifies to the antiderivative of u to the seventh du. What is the antiderivative of u to the seventh? One-eighth u to the eighth. Plus c, and then my u, remember u is t squared minus t cubed to the eighth power plus c. So that's how you do that. This whole time I've been steering and we only have like 22 minutes left in class, so I'm gonna let you guys work on the next page and see if you can work some of these on your own. Get as many done as you can. And then uh, as, as you go on, if you run into a roadblock, you know, you don't understand how to proceed, then I'll help you out with those. But remember, the ultimate goal is that you're able to do these new substitutions. So,
see if you can try it out. Anyway.